Hallelujah. Remember what I always say to you, any freedom that you have, that you lack knowledge in is a, is a freedom that will not last. Because one day, somebody will confuse you. I will share something with you that happened to me in 2000. I had just become a Christian then. Follow me very closely. I had just become a believer. There is this brother, I will never forget his name. His name is Taiwo. And I remember he came to me. He said, Muiwa. Church Wololo. So I said, Well, I go to this church. And he said unto me, Huh? He said, I hope you know you are going to hell. Ha. That's why I, I, I said, Hell? Hell, Bao. Muti born again. She born once again. That is whatever. He said, You are going to hell. I said, What is it? He said, Your pastors, they wear earring. Don't they? I said, Yes. Let me tell you the audacity of this guy. I have not found that audacity among Christians before. This guy said to me, he said, go and ask God. Tell God I said that your pastor is going to hell. I'm telling you on that. Level. I'm telling you what I will say to me. I will never forget. He said, um, he said tell God that I said, I will say that everyone wearing hearing is going to hellfire. He said, tell, he said go and ask him that what I said. I, I said that to him. He said, Let me now tell you the truth. Because nobody has at that time had sat us down to explain this kind of thing to us. So Taiwo scared salvation out of me. <laughs> I remember I went to church that evening. And one of the ladies who was climbing the altar, I saw earring. I started pitying how the fire. Don't forget, I was a young Christian. I didn't have understand. Okay, ah, no my joke he go. Okay, my joke not thing thing. You know, another. Okay, ah, and I started thinking. Listen, sincerely, I was like, how come nobody's telling them that they are wearing earrings? They're going to hell. Why is nobody telling them? Two thousand and one, because this was around December there about two thousand and one there about. I will never forget what I'm about to share with you. Is one of the few times the Holy Spirit must have seen how confused I was as a young Christian. What I'm about to teach you, because this time, listen, this is almost several years now of even being a pastor. Imagine a young believer. What I'm about to share with you was one of the few times I remember I practically felt a presence walk into my room. I mean practically. There are three times I've had that experience. Just thrice. Walk into my room and I could almost hear somebody telling me I was opening to scriptures that I did not know before, before that time. And the Holy Spirit explained clearly to me this subject of hair covering, I mean, of um, with death with hair covering, you know, um, jewelry. Let's see First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. He said, and he was telling me, open your scriptures to this verse. Open your scriptures here. Open your Bibles here. And everything, there was nothing the Spirit of God said to me in that room that was actually just a personal revelation. No. No personal revelations. Everything was scriptural revelation. Not the fact that I'm giving you a special revelation that nobody knows. No. It's, it told me, say, open your script, open your Bible. So now let us see. So you can understand how, why I prioritize God's word above anybody. God's word. So let's read. What does he say? He says what? In like manner, everybody, let's read. In like manner also, uh-huh. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, uh -huh. not with broided hair, uh -huh. or gold, uh -huh. or pearls, uh -huh. or costly array. And this is what people hold on to. Please go to the next verse, next verse. But that which becometh of women, professing godliness with good works. But go back to the last verse, verse 9. He says, not with broided hair. The word broided hair is like braids. 
So it's not just the people making it. I want to buy one shake on. So you, you, you are braiding hair for people, helping them to go to hell. You too are. And this is what people say then. Mm, you know, like my, not with braided hair, not with gold, not with. You cannot braid your hair. I began to hear. You cannot wear a herring. I began to hear. You cannot dress in costly array. Costly array means to dress expensive. Those of you that like to, they will tell you that one shoe, you will see shoe of 1,500. How dare you buy shoe of 1,500? That's costly array. There are shoe of 250. <laughs> you know why I said that? Because what is costly varies. Is why I use that. Hmm. So it's not just gold. This was one of the first places where I tackled the guy. Because me, when I just became a Christian, I was a troublemaker. When I found this truth, I went to his room. Taiwo, Jade. I'm telling you what I did. I went to find him. <laughs> Costly array. The first question is, I say, how do you judge that? But don't let us be in a hurry. Who judges what is costly and what is cheap? But in case somebody is saying, eh, she be, it is said only once. No, it's not said only once. So just like when we started about whatever, it is said in another place. So let's go and see it in another place. First Peter 3 2. Everybody, let's go. What does he say? While they behold your chaste conversation, uh -huh, coupled with fear, uh -huh, whose adorning let it not be. Notice, he said, they will tell you, let it not be. That at what adorning or what? Plating the hair. Is it consistent with where we're coming from? Yes, now, this is First Peter. Go back to where we're coming from, guys. Let's go back to Timothy. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Everybody, let's see. In like manner also that women adorn themselves, what? In modest apparel, with what? Shamefulness, sobriety, with what? He said, broidered hair again. He said, notice, he said, not. So they will tell you, not with. If the Bible says not with, how dare you put it on? Not with braided hair or gold. Or pearls or costly array. So jump now to Peter. He says, Who's adorning? Let it not be outward adorning of plating hair. You see, that one says braided hair. This one says plating hair. All right. And wearing of what? Gold. And of putting on what? This one just didn't put costly apparel. Continue now. But what? Let it be what? The hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God. What? This one, uh, uh, this is, this one is so simple. Great price. And I remember what the Lord said to me then, and I'm going to show you from scriptures. The Lord said the conversation here is about emphasis, not cancellation. Emphasis. The conversation about jewelry and all that is about emphasis and not cancellation. When something is about emphasis, that means what is God placing emphasis on? Now, listen to me, everybody. Everybody, write, just write that down and please give me attention. Give me attention. You must understand when God is placing emphasis on something, the Bible spoke about the outward man and spoke about the inward man. Everybody say with me, say outward man. Outward. Say the inward man. Inward. The Bible said, though the outward man perished, he said our inward man is renewed how? Day by day. Hallelujah. For which cause we faint not, but do our outward, everybody say outward, outward, outward. outward. Say with me, outward man. Outward. What is he doing? Yes. Uh -huh. What is happening? Yes. So you, you have what is called the outward man. Who is your outward man? Listen to me. The body, God bless you. The inward man is what? My spirit. So, the God, these two verses, he's God placing emphasis on something. 
Where is the emphasis of God? Is the emphasis of God on the outward man or the emphasis of God on the inward man? It is about emphasis, not cancellation. Cancellation will mean God is canceling out outward man for inward man. No. God is emphasizing inward man and not outward man. So it's a conversation about emphasis. So now let's go. Go back to Timothy and let's see again. I want you to read. Please, everybody, remove your, I want you to remove your spiritual goggles. I'm sorry, your religious goggles. Please fold it. Put it here. And then let, our, your, let your eyes be open clearly to see. In like manner also that women adorn themselves with modest apparel. See, you see, hey, the Bible is saying you should adorn yourself. Yes, he said, but he tells you what you should and what you should not. With modest apparel, with what shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with, he said, not. Can you see? Not with broided hair. No, it's not. It's emphasis. Not cancellation. Daughter, please come. Let me see. Yeah. Celebrate her for me, all right? Please be could, could you stay here? Ah, your hearing is no longer. Oh, not too Christian for you. But it's okay. All right, not with, it says, in like manner also that women adorn themselves. So it says, in, women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame faces, not with braided hair. It's a simple conversation. It means I am talking to you about a form of adornment. And my focus on that adornment is not actually on the outward, not to cancel that. What he's saying is that up until now, you have adorned yourself with outward things. I am now come to tell you that my focus is not on the one on the external, but my focus is on the one that is on the internal. So it's emphasis, not translation. Is this simple enough? So I can say, like, you know, if I say, Larry, give me your biro, not the red. But the blue. Am I saying you should never have red biro? You know, English will help us settle some things. Not with. Larry, borrow me your car. Not the Ferrari. The Lamborghini. Am I saying that Ferrari is bad and you should not have that? It is emphasis. I'm emphasizing on what I want. So when he says not with, it is a conversation on emphasis. Not a conversation on translation. What do I want? He says with modest apparel. That means I want you to be modestly dressed. And let me say this. Please be seated. I want you to be modestly dressed. Listen to me. That's why, remember what I told you? You cannot lose the baby with bath water. God is calling our attention here to modest dressing. And modest dressing is a scriptural truth. No amount of grace message will change that. No amount of new creation reality will change that. No amount of our identification in Christ will change that. No amount is that he says modest apparel. Sobriety. That means, you know, I mean, to be sober from within. Not with. So that means you are already braiding your hair. You already have gold earrings. You already have these things, but what me I want is not that. Not with that. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But with, oh, give me your phone. Not your Samsung. 
your iPhone. Are you getting that now? Am I saying that, see, don't you ever have iPhone? And don't you ever have Samsung? No. It is emphasis, what do I want? I'm asking for what I want, not, not that one. In the same way, when God came to meet I, I Abraham, give me your child, thy only child, whom thou lovest. Not Ishmael, not that one. That he says that, that it not Ishmael, does he mean Ishmael should be cancelled? No. You already have Ishmael, but my emphasis is on Isaac. Not with. So the question here is that when a daughter of God dresses up and she shows up in front of the mirror, she's not asking herself, am I sexy? A believer's whatever is not, you know, and you can, that's the funny thing, you can tell a lady, some, I mean, and that's how bastardized the world has become. You can tell a lady, oh, you look so good. Say, uh -huh, is that all? Say, you look splendiferous. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You look scintillating. Uh -huh, is that all? Uh, you look sexy. Uh -huh, let her <laughs> because that's what she wants to hear. Sexiness is not the definition of a believer's dressing. Modest apparel and sobriety is how we dress. Beloved, please go and sit down. <laughs> to bring it home clearer, let us go and see NLT. Let's see NLT. Let's see NLT, everybody. NLT. Because of time. Let's see NLT. I want you all to read with me, everybody. Let's go together. What does it say? I see the way you are reading. I want to go. Notice what the emphasis is on. Is on what? Modest. I want women to be what? Modest in their prayer. Uh-huh. They should draw, they should wear what? Clothes. Eh? Uh-huh. No, oh, oh, hey. And not draw attention to themselves. By the way, they... So that means you can fix your hair, but that's not the focus. Notice what he's saying. He says... Not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or wearing of gold or expensive clothes. Hallelujah. Continue. Continue. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by good works and things they do. Listen to me. I always say this. What makes a woman beautiful does not fade with age. The real thing if there is something that makes you beautiful and as you grow older, diminishes, that is a poor object of beauty. The real thing that makes a woman beautiful does not fade with age. And that is our inward man. That is the character. So he says, who then, whatever he said, not with here. That means I'm not his emphasis. Let's see message. Let's see message translation. Message. Everybody, everybody. No, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to verse. Let's start from verse eight. Verse eight. First Timothy two eight. Every, now, can we all read together, everybody? Please, let's read together. What does it say? Yes. Since prayer is at the bottom of all this, uh huh. What I want most for men, uh huh, to pray, uh huh. Keep angry fists at enemies, uh huh. Continue now. Uh huh. You know what that means, Abby? Instead of you going to pray, you see emphasis, going to pray, primp in front of the mirror. <laughs> you know, we know the thing women do. Bola, ba mi wo. Bola say, mi oringo kon. Ah. Primping before a mirror. It means if I had to come to church and I'm not done with my makeup, 
I prioritize being in church than standing in front of the mirror. Say with me, it's emphasis. It's emphasis. Bring me before a mirror, chasing the latest fashion. All right, let, let's continue. Everybody, let's go, let's go, let's go. What does he say? But doing something, what? Beautiful for God. And what happened after? You are doing something beautiful for God, and you are beautiful doing it. Look good, look that. Look good, dress well. But notice, he says emphasis is not on the outward man, but rather on the inward man. Now, for us to have greater clarity here, we are going to have to see First Peter, because First Peter says the same thing. Let's see First Peter 3 now, but I want to see, let's see, let me see what TPT will say about that. First Peter 3, verse 3, TPT. I want you all to please read with me, everybody. Everybody read with me. Want to go? Uh huh. Stop there. You see, that is a question of emphasis, not a focus on. So look at what he says. He says, everybody, let's say, let your beauty come from where? Not what? What is it, everybody? Focus. Uh huh. Let's continue. For. Notice he's, he's talking about lasting beauty. He's not saying that this one is not beautiful. He's saying that there's something better. What the Bible is talking about is a better beauty than something that money can buy. He says, all right, aha, which is, you know, which is peaceful spirit, which is precious in God's sight, and much more important than what? Much more. Important. Everybody, what does it say? Much more. Aha. Uh -huh. So you see, you, are you seeing the focus? You see that it's a question of emphasis. Where should emphasis be, everybody? Where should emphasis be, everybody? Not the outward man. And just when I was done, God spoke to my heart. Everybody listen. I'm about to show you something that will bless you dearly. God spoke to my heart. He says, son, I will never borrow something from Satan. If earrings were demonic, and satanic, he said, I will never borrow anything from Satan as an analogy or as a tool of description of salvation. He said, out to adornment is a major part. I said, dear Lord, it is? He said, yes. He said, go and see Ezekiel 16. Like I said, those that day, I had never seen this, but I could hear the voice telling me where the scriptures were. Let's see Ezekiel 16 and we we'll round off. Ezekiel 16 from verse 1. Everybody, let us read together. I want you all to read. This one, you have to see it though. Because this is a scripture that will blow you away. In fact, some of you who think that see, you are very fashion or whatever, you will know that we are here. God is harder than you. I remember I was reading this. I said, ah, daddy, you're lazy. You're lazy. You're lazy. Even my wife dressed like this, I would say, ah, madam, tone down, tone down. You. So you never even reach. Let us read. What does it say? <laughs> Whose word came to me? Came unto me saying what? Son of man, aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. uh, no, you are not reading the way. I want you to, you know, when, you know when you are when you are eating and you are sucking the marrow of everything, you know, you are enjoying every part. So read with that that, that delight. I want to go. Thus said the Lord, God, Jerusalem, uh -huh. thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. Uh -huh. And for thy nativity, uh -huh, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not caught, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all. Nor swaddled at all. Uh -huh. No, I pitied you to do you any of these things, to have compassion upon you, but thou 
as cast into open field, uh -huh, to the loathing of the person in the day that thou was born. Uh, read this, you will enjoy this. And when I passed by thee, and I saw thee, this is God. There is how you were living your life before, until God showed up. When I passed by thee, and I saw thee, God saw you in your sin, in your mess, and I saw thee, uh huh. What did God say? I said unto thee, when thou was in where? In the blood of your former guilt. Uh huh. I said, live. God gave you life. Live. Uh huh. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, what did I say? Live. Continue. I have caused thee to multiply as the board of the field, and thou hast increased and waxing great, and thou hast come to what? Continue. Their breasts are fashioned, uh huh. Then hair grown, uh huh. Whereas thou were naked, that means you were naked before I clothed you with righteousness. I made you look beautiful, all right? Let's continue. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea! I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Continue. Then what did I do? I washed thee with water, uh huh. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. What did I do? Remember, God did not just wash us with our sin, He gave us the Holy Spirit. I anointed you with oil, all right, which is a typology, whatever. I clothed you with what? What did God clothe us with? Now, you're about to see some things here now. God is about to show off. Continue. Not just ordinary skin. No. There's a kind of skin. Badgers. Skin. Uh-huh. And I gathered you about with what? Listen, not just ordinary linen. Fine linen. Uh-huh. And everybody, do you know what silk is? Huh. Is silk cheap? So God says, I covered you with silk. God is trying to buga, he's showing you why. Now, continue now. Stop there. This is God speaking. God said to me, look, if, if, if ornaments were bad, I would never have used it. He said, I decked thee with what? And what did God do? Ladies, you have bracelets on your hand. I just want you to understand that. See, listen. God says, I put bracelets, bracelets upon your hand. Let's continue. And what? A chain upon thy neck. Wooza. Let's continue. Are you people put a jewel on your forehead? Arthur? I put a jewel on your forehead. Continue. What did he put there? Where did he put it? This is so everybody follow me. God wanted to beautify somebody who he saw in the gutter, in the whatever. God cleansed the person. God poured oil on the person. God now told himself, what will I use to beautify this girl? God says, first of all, give her fine linen. I don't like these shoes. Give her badger skin. God says, mm, put bracelet. bracelet. I want bracelet. Bracelet. When they put bracelet, God looked again and said, mm -mm. I want head chain on her forehead. God says, God put earrings. This is God describing the things he did. And a beautiful crown upon thine head. Continue. And thus was thou decked with what? Who decked you with gold and silver? Thou were decked with gold and silver, uh huh. And silk, uh huh. Uh huh. No, it's, it's a not fine flower, not nonsense flower. Uh huh. Uh huh. And honey, uh huh. Uh huh. That's what I wanted to see. So the goal, God wanted to make somebody beautiful. And what God considered to use. To actually achieve the goal of beauty 
was to actually put bracelet, earrings, and some things on the person. And listen, hey, everybody, listen, don't, don't be religious on me. God said himself, look at what God said, after God had done all that, and thou was exceedingly no man said it. God said it. After somebody wore a ring. After somebody wore chain. After somebody wore bracelet. After somebody wore fine linen. God said, looked at her. And God said, God, God. I didn't say that. God said, thou was exceedingly beautiful. But I will show you why God started emphasizing inward beauty against outward beauty. That was exceedingly beautiful. Everybody, what happened there after? Into what? Continue. Everybody, continue now. Jari now went forth. Ah, are you getting what I'm saying? Baby, let me use you as an example, Jari. We are king of head chain for my concept. Please be seated, guys. Let me just use it. So, she's here. So, assuming God found her, you know, I mean, I'm God, all right? I always God. And then I found her. And then she was not looking beautiful. And then God started, because when God wants to do a project, it starts from the beginning. God told himself, I want to make a beautiful girl. Heart of this girl. God says, first, wash her away from her blood. This one that would, where they give birth to her. Cleanse her from her sin. God says, okay, all right. Now, the goal is beauty. God says, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> if he chains away, bracelet. God says, all right, okay. Now, head, whatever, then earrings, then everything. When God did everything, God says, fine linen, everything. God began to whatever. After God was done, God now presented her. Go back to that scripture. Go back to the verse, whatever. Read that place with me again. And thou was what? Exceedingly what? God was saying, see what I've done. Exceedingly beautiful. And how did I achieve it? I cleaned her up. I gave her jewelry to wear. And I considered that beautiful. But this, this is where the issue now whatever. Look at the next verse now. And thy renown went forth among the hidden for thy beauty. People started saying, should you read Hey! Oh, my yeah, fine. Oh, my yeah. That girl is beautiful. That girl is fine. He says, thy renown went for the hidden people. Say, you know, beauty. For it was perfect. This is where I wanted you to see. Notice, she was beautiful, but she was not perfect. What made her perfect is in this scripture. Everybody read. What did he say? You can be beautiful, but it's the nature of God on your inside that makes you perfect. That is the comeliness of God. That is the character of God on your inside. Very beautiful girls on the outside without the comeliness of, girl, of God. You know what I call them? Beauty and the beast. Beautiful on the outside, but they are beastly on the inside. Because God said, I put everything... You were beautiful, but you were not perfect until my comeliness started walking through you. If the comeliness, sobriety of God is not in you, haven't you seen very saucy fine girls? Talk anyhow to people, rude girls. Very rude. They lack the comeliness of God. He says you were perfect. He looked at her and the renown went forth. And the hidden word, for it was perfect. How? Through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord of God, the Lord of hosts. I want to ask you a question. Listen to me, everybody. Are you allowing the gift of the Spirit to come out? Or you are just there primping in, in front of mirror and just looking all sexy, you know, 44 rings. Once you start even wearing 44 rings, you have started disobeying the scripture. You know why? You know, because the Bible talked about modrisi. Then modrisi has gone. Hearings all over. You have stepped out of modrisi. He's telling, talking to us about modrisi here. He says, listen, you are beautiful, but you were only perfect through my comeliness. Many beautiful girls that have not been perfected. 
Because what God actually adds to earrings is missing. What God adds beyond chain is no longer found in their life. Very saucy. That is why I said, what makes a woman beautiful does not age with time. When a woman is beautiful in their old age, they are still fine. You know why? Because it's the comeliness of God. It's the comeliness of God. You will now see the trouble now. Baby, please, you see the thank you. Let me honor her. Now, let us round up. See that. Please be seated because of time. And thy renown went forth among the heathen, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord God. Let's look, everybody, what does it say? But thou did trust where? Everybody, you are not reading that one very well now. What happened? For some people, it's not your beauty, it's your shape. After a while, you think that that's what will get you the best of guys. Don't worry. Is your, is your, is your, you know, I have, I have high cheekbone. When I, whatever, I look like a mom uh, there. Uh, it says, but thou did trust in thy own beauty. And what happened after? You played the harlot. Because of thy renown and pour out thy fornication on every whatever and pass it. But what happened? Is the fact that when you allow beauty to get into your head, this is what the emphasis of hearing is. Now go back now to First Peter and see. Let's go back to First Peter three three, TPT. First Peter three three TPT. Everybody, let us go. What does he say? Let your everybody want to go. What does he say? True beauty come from your inner personality not a focus on the external for <clears throat> comes from a gentle and peaceful spirit which is precious in God's sight and is much more important than the outward adornment now you see that now every time you hear conversation about earrings and all that God will never have used it as an object of beautification if it was wrong. For God to have used it at all, he never will borrow something, something from Satan to actually use to explain himself. Even though God was using it to explain something there, if it was from the devil, God would never have gone to Satan to borrow it. It is because it is good, it is beautiful. But listen to me, everybody. You only become perfect through the comeliness of God. When you begin to pay attention to the inward man, after, I mean, more than the outward man, that is where our victory lies. So the question is not whether you should not. It says not with emphasis. I'm not paying attention to that. I'm trying to talk to you about something deeper. Beauty that is beyond skin. Beauty that is from within. So if somebody can spend 300000 buying body cream, but they can't spend that kind of amount to buy books, They can't spend those amount of money on the things of God. You already see that something is wrong now. Emphasis now is on the natural, not on the spiritual. They can't say, let's give in church, and then you consider that I can give God 300, but I can consider that to buy cream for myself. Something is already wrong. You don't understand where the real beauty is. So what God is calling at your attention to actually majorly is... Emphasis. Let me tell your neighbor, emphasis. Emphasis. 